There's two main varieties of watercolour, that's watercolour pans and watercolour tubes. So in today's video I'm going to talk through the main pros and cons of both so that you can decide which paints are right for you. Don't forget I also have a brand new Skillshare class and in that class we're painting five watercolour galaxy paintings. You can also claim one month free on Skillshare by claiming their three month trial period and I have a link down below where you can access that as well as access my classes on Skillshare. I also have a link to my Patreon so if you're particularly interested in colouring then my Patreon might be for you so that is listed down below as well and also all of my social media links. But without further ado let's just jump right into today's video. Watercolour pans are made up of pigment, binder and additives that become activated with water. You can buy them in half pans or full pans and in open stock or in a set. The pans I'm showcasing today are the Winsor & Newton Cotman set of 45 half pans and the set comes with a paint palette attached. That's pretty common for sets of watercolour pans. They will normally have a palette so it's convenient and ready to use. Watercolour pans are also easy to travel with because they are compact, mess-free and lightweight. Of course you will need to purchase other materials separately like your paintbrushes and paper but don't forget to have water on hand as well as you need water to activate the paints. What I like most about watercolour pans is they're ready to use and you only use what you need so there tends to be less wastage than watercolour tubes. There's also a variety of colours in sets and you can stretch these colours further by mixing swatches. All you need to activate the paints is water and I like to use a spray bottle because I find it keeps the palette wetter for longer and it stops the paint from getting too dry quickly. I use the paint palette to create colour swatches and you can also wake up old colours by simply adding water to the palette. A downside to watercolour pans is colours can get muddied if you're not rinsing your brushes properly, but a trick I have to prevent this is by using two jars of water to rinse my brushes. I rinse my brush in the first jar and then rinse again in the second as this strips the colour from the brush. Sometimes I use a paper towel to remove any excess paint and water, but this isn't always needed. It's important to rinse your brushes in between colours so you can get authentic colours instead of muddied or dull colours. If you keep dipping into the colours without rinsing your brush, you will alter colours and this can really affect your painting outcomes. So you can see here how I rinse my brush in two jars of water before I pick up colour from another pan. And I'm doing this to prevent the pans from becoming dirty. You only want to mix colours on the palette, not straight from a pan. With tubes, the colours won't get spoiled because you're squeezing paint out of the tube and onto the palette and mixing from there. The good thing is that as pans are solid, they're easy to clean because you can remove the surface layer of the paint to expose the natural colour underneath. So even if you have been dipping in and out of pans and your pans are dirty, you can clean them and get the authentic colour back. All you need to do is get a wipe or a damp paper towel and start gently lifting the surface layer of the pan. You will start to strip the top coating of colour which will expose the next layer underneath. Every time you lift colour off the pan, make sure you use an untouched part of the wipe so you aren't contaminating the pan again. After a few lifts you should see that the original colour is showing through and you've removed the contaminated layers. Another thing you should avoid doing with pans is being aggressive with brushes. If you're jabbing your paint brushes into the pan, then it can start to break up the paint and form clumps, which can then be transferred to your painting. Also, you can damage your brushes by doing this because it will put strain on the bristles and you can get things like hair loss or loss from the natural shape of the head. Good quality watercolour brushes are extremely fragile as well as expensive so you need to treat them carefully to preserve them and get the most out of them. Always make sure you are being gentle when picking up paint from your pans. Use water to help your brush glide across the surface of the pan so you can pick up colours more easily. This will really help you to prevent the pan and paintbrush from getting damaged. It's also important that when you mix colours on your palette you are doing the same thing. Use gentle strokes to pick up your colours and be gentle when you're painting on paper to get those loose watercolour effects. A 
couple more downsides to watercolour pans is they can get stuck in the set as water seeps through the gaps in between the pans. You need to be able to remove pans to clean the palette underneath and identify colours to replace. I often have to use a palette knife to remove the pans, which is really hard work as it takes a lot of prying to release the pans. And if you needed to remove every single pan, this would be very time consuming and messy. You also need to be careful not to accidentally strike a pan with a knife as this could damage the pan. The sticky substance underneath the pan is from where old paint and water has got trapped and settled underneath and it leaves a horrible residue. Once I finally got the pan removed, you can see how much mess is on it and underneath it and you need to be careful not to transfer this to a painting. It also makes it really difficult to identify a pan because you need to physically remove and clean them to read the product information on the side. Watercolour tubes are easy to identify because all tubes are clearly labelled. And you can see the consistency of the sludge underneath the tube and it's really difficult to clean up because it's so thick and sticky. Once the pan has been cleaned we can finally see the product information, but I do wish that there was an easier way of identifying them like with tubes. Earlier on I mentioned how you can reactivate colours that have dried on the palette, so this is a good way of reusing colours. To reactivate colours all you need to do is add water and you're good to go. Over time as more colours build up the palette can become muddy so you may want to consider cleaning your palette at this point so you don't contaminate any new colours. The same applies for leftover colours from tubes and it's really simple to clean your palette. Just a few wipes or wet paper towels and keep lifting the colours up until your palette is clean. Once the palette is clean, I also like to dry the palette so that water doesn't transfer into the pans once I close the lid. With a fresh palette, you can start to mix colours again without worrying about reactivating old colours and affecting the pigment. Watercolour pans are a lot smaller than tubes, so therefore they will need replacing more often and are more expensive than tubes. However, I would say that they are better for beginners because they are convenient, compact and you can practice with them. So let's take a closer look at watercolour tubes. Watercolour tubes are made up of pigment binder and additives too, and they are activated with water. They are a liquid formula, so they're creamier and runnier than pans. You can buy tubes as open stock or in sets, but unlike pans, you often need to buy a paint palette separately. What I love most about watercolour tubes is they contain a lot of paint, and they won't need replacing as often as pans. So if you are creating a lot of paintings or large scale paintings, tubes are more economical than pans because they will last longer. However, a downside to this is tubes create more wastage because sometimes you can squeeze more paint out of the tube than you actually need and it doesn't get used. You can reactivate the paint another time by adding water, a bit like how you would reactivate paints left over from a pan, but it is best to use small amounts at a time and apply more paint when you need it. Because tubes are thicker in consistency, they appear brighter than pans, but the reality is the colour strength and vibrancy is the same, you just need to alter your paint to water ratio. For example, if you use less water with pans, their consistency will thicken, and if you use more water with tubes, you will thin them down and you'll end up with a similar consistency and vibrancy with both pans and tubes. You need to experiment with paint to water ratio to achieve the effects you are looking for. If you are using good quality paints, then you will get good results with both pans and tubes. And you can see here how easy it is to reactivate dried paint, so it's the same process as pans. You can also use tubes to refill pans as you can get the same colours in tube or pan form. And it's more cost effective than just replacing with a new pan as tubes contain more paint. You also have more customisable options with tubes, as you can mix colours together to create a new set of colours, whereas you can't do this with pans unless you're using tubes to refill them or mixing colours on your palette. A downside to tubes though is the tubes can dry out if you aren't securely fastening the lid on the tube and air gets inside, drying up the paint. You need to make sure you put the lid on properly and tighten it so it's airtight. You also need to be careful with paint spilling out over the sides of the tube because once the lid is on and the paint dries around the lid, it can get stuck and create a bit of a mess. 
This has happened to me countless times and it doesn't help that tubes are messier than pans too. Always make sure you clean up your tubes to prevent this from happening. The good news is tubes are also very easy to clean. If the paint has dried and hardened, you can just peel it away. And if the paint is still wet, you can just clean it with a wipe to prevent it from getting stuck again. Just be careful that you don't squeeze the tube though, as paint can easily spill out. And finally, you can get paint separation with tubes if you squeeze out the gum arabic binder. So if this happens, you'll need to stir the mixture up. So we've talked about the main differences between pans and tubes and the pros and cons of both, but I thought it would be a good idea to show you a visual demonstration of the results you would get using either pans or tubes in a painting. And I also did a painting using both, so we can really see if there's a difference. I used just pans for this painting, and I found them easy to use with great colour saturation and vibrancy. It was really easy to work in layers, so for example layering colours into the background and creating trees in the foreground. I altered my paint to water ratio to create stronger and lighter colours, and I'm really happy with the results. I found the tubes to be thicker in consistency, so I had to use more water to lighten the colours and make them appear more translucent, but in terms of how they layer and fill, they feel the same as pans and I was equally happy with the results I got. The main difference really is the water to paint ratio. I find you need to use less water with pans to increase their intensity, but tubes can be very thick so you need more water to thin them down. However, the standard and quality of the paintings is on par with each other and you will be happy with using either pans or tubes. Here's just a little close up of the painting side by side so you can really see how they compare to each other. I think if you didn't know which type of paint I had used, you really wouldn't be able to tell. I didn't have the exact same colours in both sets, but I tried to use similar colours to give an accurate comparison for you all. And I also did a couple of paintings where I combined both watercolour pans and tubes and you can definitely use both of them together. It's just down to personal preference and what you like best. I really hope that you found this comparison video between pans and tubes helpful and it's helped you come to a decision whether you want to use pans or tubes or maybe both. If this video did help you, please do hit that subscribe button because it really helps me and the channel out. And I also do have everything you need to know listed in the description. So for example, all of the materials and supplies that I used in this video are listed down below. And I also have a link to both my Skillshare and Patreon if you want to learn more about what I do over on there. But anyway, thank you so much for watching today's video and I will see you soon. Bye guys.